now we have a geometric insight into, into how uh, you know your regularization kind of works um, can we use this insight to come up with perhaps a different way to regularize our linear regression so that we you know somehow encourage our w's to have exactly zero values right so in in other words can we change this region from which we are searching for our w which is what your regularizer essentially does right so it is putting a constraint on where you are searching for w can we somehow change this so that you know there it is more likely that these elliptical contours are going to hit uh, at a point where some of the features exactly become zero and not be, just become small right so this is a motivation to make to it's a kind of get a sparse solution sparse means a lot of zeros uh, and an alternate way oops an alternate way uh, to regularize would then uh, be using as we will see why this is a better way is using um, L1 norm uh, instead of L2 norm. L2 squared. What does that mean? Right. So, what is an L1 norm? Well, L1 norm of a vector w is defined as sum over i equals 1 to d, the absolute value of each of its components. You are just summing up the absolute values. Um, now, uh, what does this mean? This means that if we are now, if you are regularizing using the L1 norm, which, which would look something like this, right? regularization uh, l1 regularization would 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 mean that we are trying to minimize over w the loss is the same sum over i equals 1 to n w transpose xi minus y i squared now plus lambda l1 of w which is the sum of the absolute values now our equivalence would tell us that this is equivalent to minimizing w in rd the loss as usual but then now your for for a given choice of lambda it's going to be some other theta which will impose a constraint on the l1 norm it may not be the same theta as uh, the l2 but then we are just going to use abuse notation and say it's also theta right so some theta right so it doesn't matter what the value is the more important thing is that you can write the same problem with the L1 regularization also as a constraint optimization problem where now the constraint is on the L1 norm of W. Now, what does it mean to say we have an L1 constraint on W, right? So, where how does the picture now look like? Well, first question is where are the L1 constraint Ws present, right? So, again we go back to the picture, right? So, um, earlier uh, we had this guy, right? So, which was our L2 constraint. This was our L2 constraint. So, just norm W squared <clears throat> less than or equal to theta. Now, we are not searching here. We are searching elsewhere. We are searching in norm L1 norm of W less than or equal to some other theta. But where are those guys? Well, if you think about where those guys are, well, those are exactly here in this region. Right. So, this is norm L1 less than or equal to theta. Right. <clears throat> well, let me shade this. Now, this is the region we are searching for um, our W. Now, why is this helpful? <clears throat> well, again, this is an intuitive argument why this may be helpful. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, Let us say we again had our w hat ml somewhere here and we had our elliptical contours ar around w hat ml. Uh, now, what might happen is as you increase the loss, right? So, that is still happening this way only, right? So, as the loss increases in an elliptical fashion, the hope is that you know you will first hit 
somewhere here right so i'm i'm not drawing it that well but then the hope is that you will hit it at this point more likely it's not absolutely necessary you're going to hit here uh, but if you hit here as opposed to hitting here right so if you if you if you consider this would be our w hat ridge because that's the first place where i hit the uh, circle whereas because there is a bulge you you tend to hit before right so before you hit this flat surface so you move further uh, when you are doing a, a l1 penalization and you might hit somewhere here right so this is uh, uh, w hat well i'll give the name so l right so this is w hat l and we'll say what l is this is a this is equivalent to the l1 regularization regularized solution but what's the use of hitting it at this point well at this point you know you have only one feature which has a positive value the other feature has zero value right so if you see there are only four because there are only two features um, a sparse solution will just pick one feature among these two features right so you either pick both the features you cannot pick you cannot not pick both the features which means you cannot just give zero values to both the um, w's so that is meaningless uh, but here sparsity would mean that you are just picking one feature and the only places where you can pick one features are th these four points right so these are the four points where one of the coordinate value is zero right so which means that one feature has weightage zero the other feature only is important right so now um, in two dimension you know you one can argue that why why is w hat ml here why are the elliptical contours like this can we be can it be placed differently such that you know you may not get such a, a sparse solution i agree that that can happen uh, but in high dimension what typ typically people observe is that when you do an l1 regularizer you are more likely to hit more sparse solution than an l2 regularizer right so the intuitive argument is that you know l2 has this bulge in terms of where this feature space where you are searching but then l1 is flat and so you kind of move beyond the bulge and then hit a flat point where uh, a lot of uh, many components might be zero this is an intuitive argument of course one can one can prove a few things about this we won't do that but then uh, in an advanced course you would try to prove when your l1 is guaranteed to give you sparse solution and so on <clears throat> we are not doing that <clears throat> uh, for now uh, this would suffice to say that instead of the l2 regularizer if you used an l1 penalty or a regularizer then you perhaps will get more sparse solution right so this uh, <clears throat> this way of doing this <clears throat> doing uh, uh, linear regression is what is called as <clears throat> the l1 regularization this name for this is what is called as lasso <clears throat> Uh, lasso is an abbreviation for uh, as an acronym for least absolute uh, shrinkage and <coughs> selection operator So what does uh, what does this mean? Uh, it it just means that I mean each each word here has a meaning that we already kind of have seen. Um, it's it's least because we are minimizing some loss. Um, absolute is because we use an L1 penalty, which which is just a sum of absolute values. Um, it's called shrinkage because the length of W is shrunk, right? So we are only searching in a place where uh, W has smaller length, and so this is a shrinkage operator. Um, and, and even L2 is a shrinkage operator for that matter, right? So any, anything that minimizes the length, I mean search, search space by minimizing the length of uh, the parameter to search for is a, shrink, it's a shrinkage problem. So this is also a shrinkage operator, but then it shrinks using the absolute value. That's the difference. Uh, selection because the hope is that, you know, you are not just shrinking to make W value smaller, uh, but you eventually want this to select the important features. Right, so you want to push a lot of Ws to zero, components to zero, exactly zero, such that the remaining features, which get non-zero values, are the ones that are important for minimizing the loss. So we can select only those features and then you know leave out the rest. So this is also a selection problem. Operator is just a fancy now fancy word to say that it's a regularizer.
right so um, so this is what is called as the lasso penalty or lasso problem um, and and uh, this is also very popularly used to solve the least uh, re uh, linear regression problem especially when you have like a lot of features when you hope that most of these features are useless or redundant features then lasso would kind of push them to exactly zero